How do you do, my friends, abundant everywhere, boys and girls and mothers and fathers and teachers and people? I am the professor, and this is my place where I work and where things strange and uncommon come to light. Come to light. I am about to light the candle again, and remember the quotation, I have come not to curse the darkness, but to light a candle, and I have lighted it. It is now lighted. Now, it is in the air atmosphere. It has oxygen to breathe. Combustion takes place. Now I put this cylinder, open at both ends, tightly over it, which we did last time. And now, just as it is on the verge of losing its life, of dying out, of expiring, I'm going to slip this cylinder, uh, uh, this sliver of uh, metal, down so, dividing the glass cylinder into two parts. And the candle will breathe a new life, we hope, if I, I have to be very critical. It calls for nearly surgical skill, because if I am delayed by a hair, I have failed the candle. Watch it now. There we are. Now, oh, oh, notice I was too late. The patient died for want of oxygen. I'll try it again. I'll try it again. Watch it. Watch it. Oh, I, I, notice I am very inept. And after, after a half a century at this, I ought to be able to do this. But anyway, I'm not able to do it, as is obvious. Oh, well, I know what the trouble is. Do you see, we must never say the experiment failed. Never, never. I was inadequate for nature. It appears that there is in this place, in this castle room, cold, damp air moving about from strange underground quarters, and uh, nature is being being irritated by these misadventures. But what I want to show you is this. When I put that sliver of metal down there, it divides this chamber into two parts. And the products of combustion, the gases and such, come up here, but fresh air falls down here. And thus the candle is kept alive. So you can lay this down to a failure by the professor because he doesn't know how to do things too well. Next demonstration. In this, I become a little vulgar by lighting a cigarette. And here is what I want to talk about. Here is a glass ashtray. Here is a wooden ashtray. And I call your attention to the burnt part here, which was a consequence, obviously, of some inadvertent action. I guess this is the right end. Notice... Uh, I am of the old world, and I don't know the ends of these things. Well, there's a hundred years of nicotine on my lungs already. Now what happens? If I put this cigarette there, it would continue to burn, but soon would go out when the burning part reaches the glass. Why? Because glass is a good thermal conductor and takes the heat away. Whereas here, it would continue to burn because wood is not a good thermal conductor. And so, I urge you, the danger of putting a lighted cigarette inadvertently in a wrong place. Glass, a good thermal conductor. Wood, not. Very important business. Now, where do we go? We go to a new adventure of a kind that will absolutely astonish you. The case of two smooth-faced metal plates, which I propose to put together like that, and then pull apart, or try to. And I want you to think about it until we meet. For the forces that arise in this process will be absolutely unbelievable to you. Absolutely. And we shall return with this another time, and I thank you for watching us now.